So today we're looking at what 2010s subculture are you? And the first question is choose the closest color scheme for your ideal wardrobe. The first option here is black with some odd shades of pink and brown. I can't see pink and brown being a good color combination. Like in general too, I think looking at this, you'd kind of look like a questionable cake, I think. I don't know if it's just me, but these shades of pink make me think of like, I don't know what kind of cake it is that has these. Maybe like a rhubarb raspberry pie? I don't know. Either way, I don't want to look like pie or cake or anything like that. The second option we have, we have a sickly shade of green some, and like a few different shades of like brown and tan. It's a good color scheme if you're in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but it's not my vibe. Our third choice is... A couple questionable shades of yellow. I don't even know what the middle one is. I think it's like purple and green. Everything's so kind of like faded looking. Like this whole color palette just looks like it's been left out in like the sun for too long. And the colors are all starting to go. And besides, I don't like the fact that I don't know for sure what the third color is. So our fourth choice is yellow a kind of carroty orange and a green and blue this one looks like soup to me i don't know why but like when you have carrots in a broth for too long i don't know what the yellow would be though but overall just the vibe just kind of like squinting your eyes looking at the general saturation level they chose i don't like this at all like so far none of these have a good saturation level like they're all kind of faded in a weird way not that I like pastels per se, but it's just kind of questionable, you know? Our fifth choice is, I believe it's the asexual pride flag, which is actually pretty nice. I like it. I mean, I think the purple overall is a bit too dark, but it's certainly better than any of the others we've seen. The sixth palette is a kind of light purple, light pink, light blue, and black. Overall, like, it's definitely better, like I was saying, in terms of, like, saturation level and that sort of thing, but to me, it seems kind of like the color scheme of, like, a toy plush unicorn, which, nothing against plush unicorns, but it's not really the kind of aesthetic I would go for. I don't think it matches my personality, per se. We have the, um, seventh color palette is black, purple, blue, and gray. It's a nicer shade of purple, like the overall a bit lighter is nicer than the one above it, the Ace Pride flag one. That being said though, I don't like that there's no gray, like I would almost trade out the purple for like a similar gray, I think. I guess the color at the bottom is supposed to be gray, but you know, as I'm looking at this, maybe it's not that bad. The eighth color palette is black and a neon pink, blue, and green, like it looks like highlighters, like those neon gimmicky highlighters they would sell, which overall is not a bad aesthetic, but once again, I don't know if it suits me in particular. Like, I don't like drawing attention to myself all that much, and having your clothes dyed with highlighter juice, I think, would be kind of the opposite of that. And the last color palette is a light blue, two shades of like pink, and a dark blue. This would make, like, I've seen, I think, aesthetic boards with this kind of thing, like, glitchy kind of aesthetics with this color palette. And, again, it's not bad, but it kind of leans into the whole plush unicorn thing again, which I don't necessarily want to be a part of. So, I'm going to go with the, um, one below the Ace Pride flag. I like the representation of the Ace Pride color palette, but the purple's a bit off. It's not really... Like, I would trade off the more genuine representation for the better aesthetics, you know? Just slightly, like, I don't remember what shade of purple they use in the actual pride flag, but, like, in terms of outfit-wise, I think this would be the best. Question two is choose a vibe. The first choice is a bunch of, like, I think it's supposed to be, like, not a witch, a fortune teller kind of setup. The flowers are nice. I don't know what those cards are. They look pretty, but I don't think they're actual tarot cards. Like, if I went to a fortune teller and they just put down, like, a B, I would feel a bit disappointed. Like, I don't know what kind of flowers those are on the right, though, but they're really pretty. The second choice is a, I believe that's a mason jar full of glitter that's spilled over, which, like, you're gonna have a fun time cleaning that up, I know, like... 
The pink on the flat black background is not a bad color scheme, but is it really like worth it? I mean, like there's a lot of really fine particles I see, like, and not only that, but there's, I don't know if it's just the light reflecting off them, but there's also what looks to be like some yellow bits too, which I don't vibe with. The third option is what looks like to be a pastoral kind of idyllic countryside with a fluffy white dog. I'm a big fan of the dog, but I don't know about the actual scenery. Like, I'm pretty sure that's the kind of stuff they put on, like, James Harriet covers. I could be wrong, but that kind of, like, old English scene. I'm not British. I don't think I could survive in a thing like that. Like, I think as soon as I talk to someone, they would be able to realize by the way I speak that I'm not British, and they would just, like beat me to death, I guess. I mean, maybe that's what the dog is for. He could protect me, but I don't think I could be able to, like, live off the land, you know? Also, they have, like, what looks like a wooden chair, which is a nice aesthetic, but they're, like, not great to sit in. Our fourth option is, I literally do not know what I'm looking at. Are those, like, vases full of flowers in a lake? Are they weird, like, I don't know what this is, so I can't really recommend it. But the color scheme, color palette is kind of just nauseating. I don't know if it's supposed to be like vaporwave, but I don't like it one bit. The fifth option is a cafe, which I know is supposed to be kind of cozy, but I've never really been one for those vibes. Like, it looks like the kind of place you'd some guy would end up like trying to sell you crypto in or something. I don't know. You know, I mean, like, just the general kind of hipster vibe. I guess I go every now and then to the second cup and it kind of has a similar atmosphere, but I just get my order and leave. Like, I don't want to roast in that atmosphere, if you know what I mean. The sixth option is, it's at least a lookalike of Starry Night by Vincent Van Gogh, which, I mean, definitely is a good painting. Like, that moon is really pretty, but... I don't know how I, as a person, am supposed to interact with this aesthetic. Like, I guess you're just going for the general vibe you're getting from the picture, but especially the way it's cropped, you can't really see enough of this photo in particular to get a good sense of what it's like, at least if that's what you're meant to be going for, like just reacting to the vibe of the picture. So that's kind of disappointing. I mean, it is a nice painting. Our seventh option is some neon glowing flowers, which the idea, I kind of like the general aesthetics of neon, but you got to be careful with the lighting. Like in this one, you can't really, it's hard to see much aside from the flowers. So it's hard to fully get into the vibe. For our eighth option, we have someone trying to do like the ring but in reverse you know you're not supposed to get that close to the tv and i don't think touching it is going to be good for you that being said it is like a nice color scheme her nails look pretty good i think those are like christmas lights though on the tv i'm not a big fan of that but overall it's definitely the best so far and her last option is clown vomit as seen by someone with astigmatism I hope I don't have astigmatism, and I'm not a big fan of vomit, so I'm going to be going with the TV entering one. It's definitely the closest. The third question is choose an outfit. I'm going to be judging this mostly just by the overall aesthetics. These are all like really hipstery kind of outfits. I mean, I don't know too much, but these all seem like pretty uh, tryhard. I mean, I know I've been saying I want to get more into fashion, but I don't really like any of these. I'm gonna go with this option. It's like, there's a button-up shirt with like khakis. Like it looks like you're gonna be a, it looks like something an employee in like some office of a business that's slowly getting replaced by automation would wear. It's not great. I don't know why you would wear a watch in 2021, but that being said, it's better than most of the other outfits. So like at least I could see someone wearing it. Fourth question is where would you like to be? First option is you're entering a nightclub. Neon lights move over the dancing crowd as you make your way through the door. You go to the bar to order your favorite drink and the night begins. This hasn't really aged well in the modern era. I mean, I don't know when this quiz is from, but where I'm from, we're not exactly up on our restrictions or management, so I wouldn't trust this at all besides I'm assuming this requires you being near other people, which I'm not a big fan of. The second option is you're on the porch of a cabin nestled in the forest. You look up from your book to see trees and wildflowers surrounding you. The sky is clear and you hear birds singing. That seems alright, I guess. Like, I'm not a big fan of the whole 
isolation being strand kind of vibe that I'm guessing this is implying, but it's better than dying, I guess, at least in the way that the first one implies. And the third option is you're in an abandoned mansion built in 1898 with your best friends. This house is known to be haunted and has been abandoned for almost 50 years since the wife of the recent owner murdered her husband and fled to be never found again. I hope I got that last part right. Um, I can vibe with murdering your husband, you know, I get it. If it's been abandoned for 50 years, that would mean it would happen, would have happened in 1971 which would make the house in relatively recent state. I wouldn't trust a house in that condition. I mean, that's been alone for that long, you know? But I'm a big fan of killing your husband, so I'm gonna go with it just for the, like, just for the spirit, you know? Question five is choose a magical item with unknown abilities. The first option is a paintbrush. I'm not a good artist, so if I have to, like, do art in order to get it to work, it's probably not going to go well for me. That being said, I have been meaning to get into doing art and like needing to get better to do, access some power might be a good motivator. The second option is a pink bottle of water that's like spraying water everywhere, I think. I don't know how you would use this, but I don't trust the overall aesthetic. Like there's this ominous mist. The third option is a grimoire, which would probably send me to hell, so I vibe with it. Like, if you're having, like, a monkey's paw type of situation where every object has a drawback, I could see that being the drawback of this object, but since I'm going to hell anyways, it wouldn't have any drawback for me, which I think would be pretty good. That being said, first off, there's a bunch of, like, rose petals and stuff on the pages of the book. You should get that cleaned up. And also, I don't know why, but the font is really big in the book. Like, I don't know if it's a grimoire meant for, like, people hard of seeing, but, like, I'm a little disappointed it wouldn't be denser. And the last option is a bunch of, like, glittery seashells, which I'm not a big fan of the beach, so I'm gonna go with the grimoire, I guess. Question six is future, past, or present? I don't like thinking about things in general, so that kind of just leaves me with the present. I'm not really capable of predicting the future, you know? I don't have magical powers, despite how I might seem. And I'm also not a big fan of nostalgia. I've never really found it pleasant, so looking back on the past doesn't really have a whole lot of appeal to me. So I'm going with the present. Question seven is choose an animal. The first option is a small white dog. I'm not sure what kind of breed that is, but it looks like there's some small dogs that are like, you know, when you think of small breeds of dogs, you normally think of like a super aggressive little chaw thing, but it looks like one of the types of dogs that are like pretty nice overall. Like he's got a trustworthy face. The second option is a big pink Brachiosaurus, which I'm pretty sure they're dead. And also I doubt they were pink. And also, like, the feasibility of maintaining... So I guess if it's dead, it'll make it easier to maintain. But overall, it wouldn't be as fun having a dead animal. So I'm not a big fan of that. Third option is rabbit, which you're not supposed to have only one rabbit, because I know they get lonely and it's, like, bad for their health. Fourth option is a black cat. We have a cat on my farm that looks a lot like that. So, like, I like the vibe of the dog, but... In general, I prefer dogs, but that cat looks really friendly, so that's nice. And the fifth option is a pink dolphin. I want to judge, but I don't like how fleshy they are, how fleshy they look. Like, I'm sure it's fine. It's a fine animal and all that, but I don't trust the vibe, unfortunately, so I'm going with the cat. Question eight is what words would acquaintances use to describe you? The first option is shy, nice, odd, and or emotional. I am shy and odd, so that's, you know, two for four. I guess I kind of am emotional, but I don't try to let other people see it. The second option is hot, sensational, perfect, and or arrogant, which I am. In reality, I'm none of those, so that's pretty good. The third option is melancholy, dark, intimidating, and or authentic. I pride myself on being very inauthentic towards my personality, as I've mentioned, and I've also not really 
been ever described as intimidating or any similar vibe. Also, dark is kind of racist in this context. I'm not a big fan of that. The fourth option is thrill-seeking, unusual, creative, and or funny. I'm definitely not thrill-seeking, and apparently lately I haven't really been funny, so... Or creative. The fifth option is smart, thoughtful, interesting, and or pretentious. I am... I pride myself on being very pretentious. I don't really like using the term smart, though, to describe myself. And I'm very much not a thoughtful person, so... And the last option is quirky, fun, vibrant, and or weird. Which, once again, kind of has a try-hard atmosphere in the context of describing yourself. I'm gonna go with the first choice, just for, like... The overall aesthetics, I guess. Question 9 is which of these characters slash people's fashion inspires you? The first option is Jasmine Bean, which seems kind of edgelord. I'm not a big fan of, like, either. Kind of have to have your eyes closed for that to work. The weird, like, clown kind of aesthetic is kind of tryhard. The second option is Marceline, which is a bunch of times a good show. I haven't had a chance to see as much of it as I would have liked, but it's... What I've seen of it's been really good. Third and fourth option. Third is Sam Manson, which I know from the art style is from Danny Phantom, which I didn't get to see when I was a kid. I got to see Fairly Odd Parents, but for some reason Danny Phantom was always in like time slots or channels that I didn't have access to, so I've never seen a full episode of it, so I can't really comment on it. Fourth option is Rainbow Dash. I'm pretty sure that's from My Little Pony, which I am not a fan of. The fifth option is Velma. Which, I've never really gotten the appeal of Velma, like... Remember there was some show, some cartoon of Scooby that I watched when I was a kid, and she always... She was, like, mean in it, I don't know. That might have just been a thing for the show, but... Still. The sixth option is Aurora. I don't know who she is, per se, but I can tell from the art style she's from Disney, and I am not a big fan of Disney in general. The seventh option is Grimes. Which I like, um, not Art Angels. Well, Art Angels was alright. I liked the album before that. I think it was called Oblivion. But her newest album, Miss Anthropocene, was pretty lame. And her whole selling out Elon Musk thing kind of soured everything in my eyes. The eighth option is Honey Lemon. I don't know who that is, and I'm not gonna find out. And the last option is the entirety of Lady Baby. Once again, I have no reference to what this is, so I'm gonna default to Marceline. Question 10 is which of these do you enjoy the most? The first option is gaming, which I don't mind playing video games, but I never seem to have the time for them. And also, I don't know why, but the whole, just the verb gaming kind of rubs me the wrong way. At least with recent events, it's kind of been associated in my mind with taking yourself too seriously. Second option is learning more about favorite interests through reading, documentaries, etc. Which, once again, I haven't really... I have trouble committing myself to watching anything. I can read, but I the kind of things I'm into, it can be kind of hard to learn about them through just reading, at least at the level I'm at. Third option is going out with friends. Fourth option is writing. I've started writing recently, but the thing is, like, just getting to the first draft, it's more about getting material than making anything good, so it's kind of frustrating how long it takes as well to get through a first draft, so I think I'll be happy once I'm done, hopefully, if I manage to, like, get it cleaned up to a point where I can show it to other people, but at least for now, it's kind of more frustrating than fun. Like, I do kind of have to force myself to do it. Fifth option is drawing and or painting, which as I've said, I'm trying to get into, but I'm still at the point where it's more something I have to make myself do to learn rather than something I can just do for the enjoyment of, which I think there's nothing wrong with that, but for now it's not really something I enjoy. Sixth option is honestly nothing I need alone on phone slash computer time, which I need something kind of active to occupy myself with most hours of the day. Seventh option is going to museums, parks, or interesting shops. I'm not a big fan of, like, museums anymore. Like, I kind of get bored of individual exhibits quickly. I feel like a child. I kind of, like, run through the museum rush through everything, and I end up feeling kind of guilty over not giving everything more time. But, you know, there's always just the draw of the next attraction that rushes me, that kind of pulls me through everything. The last option is playing and or creating music, which is super fun. Like I've said before, 
My mom made me take piano now. It's kind of just a way I have to express myself. And it's being able to just like sit down and just slam your face into a keyboard and kind of make something is really rewarding. It's fun. I don't know what to say about it, but it's, it's what I'm going to go with. Question 11 is if you were sure to make a comfortable living through any of these careers, which would you choose? The first option is novelist, which uh, it is cool. I do want to like write my novels, but it's a lot of work for what you get out of it, even if I'm sure it is a rewarding experience and stuff like and if I'm sure to be able to make stuff I can sell, the effort to reward ratio is kind of off for me. The second option is music, which would be pretty nice but i need to kind of do more i guess the third option is art historian which i don't like the whole aesthetic of just like learning what other people have done and just that being the start and end of your career it's not really aesthetic you know what i mean but like like i want to be active like when you're an art historian you can't really do anything with your art per se can you like you can't like touch it or eat the paintings you know like if you're a painter you can just like i think that's a big thing if you're a painter you can just like lick what you've made at any time and no one can stop you it might be bad for your health per se with the stuff they put in paint but like no one can stop you you can't do that when you're an art historian you know if you like touch a painting you just get like struck down by god immediately you know fourth option is streaming which I'm actually kind of comfortable, at least for now, not being super big. Like, it's nice making stuff, but I don't know how I would react to having, like, a large following. I have other goals, too. I know streaming and making stuff for the internet in practice takes quite a bit of time, and I don't know if I'd be comfortable with, like, putting that amount of time into something, like, every day. Like, I like being able to just walk away from this if I need to. The fifth option is directing films, which actually would sound really nice to me. Like, I like the whole idea of like telling stories kind of like you would do with novels and possibly music but being able to like I don't know what it is about film but it seems like you'd have more reach you would have more like interactivity I don't know what it is but I've always wanted to like make a movie I'm probably never gonna get to I know it's really expensive like there is now coming in my head the kind of concern of being forced to make more commercial movies but overall it seems like it would be pretty nice the sixth option is poetry, which first off, I don't know if it's possible to make a living off of poetry. Even if it was, I don't know, like, I don't know how many poems you'd have to make, but I don't know if I could keep something like that up for long enough in terms of just, like, personal motivation, not to mention having actual valid content for long enough to sustain a career. The seventh option is photography. I love photographing animals, like... I have like hundreds of terribly taken photos of just like rabbits and coyotes and that kind of thing from around where I live. I don't know if it would be reporting as like directing a movie, but it's definitely like a pretty feasible candidate. It'd be nice to knowing where you would get your money from. Like you could like take photos for like National Geographic. I could see myself like potentially doing that as my job. The next option is stay at home parent. I like the idea of staying at home. I don't like the idea of being a parent, though. I think I could live with, like, managing a house, keeping it clean, that sort of thing, cooking if need be, but the whole idea of having to interact with children every day, I don't think I could survive that for very long. The second last option is fashion design, which once again actually does kind of appeal to me. I wouldn't mind making clothing. I... I think this would count as a job I actually would be willing to go into along with directing films and photography. Like I, it's kind of become a thing among YouTubers to some degree with people releasing like merch getting a lot of their money from like selling clothing. There's kind of a push to make yours unique at least in, to some degree. I know you in the being fashion designer you would have to like manage more than just like getting a cool print to put on a shirt, but I think that would kind of improve the standing in my eyes, not just like be more responsibility to get the job done. The last option is graphic design, which I don't, I can appreciate graphic design, but I don't really get it. I don't know how you make decisions fully in graphic design, so I don't know if I could do it for very long. 
So I am going to go with directing films, I think would be the most rewarding, but both photography and fashion design I could also see myself getting into. Okay, question 12, let's choose an album cover. The first one is, I think that's Evermore by Taylor Swift. It's one of her folkier albums, which are actually pretty good. Like, I'm not a big fan of Taylor Swift's old stuff, but I listened to at least one of them, and I was pretty impressed by how good it was. The second option is uh, In the Airplane Over the Sea by Neutral Milk Hotel, which is definitely a good album, but it seems kind of like hipster 4chan for me. Like, it's not a bad album. The third option is King Knight by Salem which I've been meaning to listen to, which I've listened to like the first few seconds of it. I've been meaning to listen to Witch House, but I don't know how much it is for me. The fourth option, I'm pretty sure that's a Danganronpa character. I don't know what that album is. I don't know if I'm going to be able to look it up or not. Let me see if I can find it here. Now, for some reason, I haven't been able to get the image to load here, but I'm 99%... Oh, hang on, it's going to load. All right, with my incredible powers of deduction, I'm pretty sure... This is the album it's referring to. I haven't listened to it. It doesn't seem like, no offense, but to the whoever made this, but it doesn't seem like a lot of people have. I don't know. I'm wondering if this may be the album that whoever made this was made, but I can't really comment on it. We've got Yellow Submarine by the Beatles, which isn't really like a proper album per se. It's more like a soundtrack, I'm pretty sure, with a couple of songs thrown in. They're pretty good songs, but I don't know how, like, why you would go with Yellow Submarine as your favorite Beatles album. The sixth option, I don't know that is, but it looks like, I don't want to jump to conclusions, but it looks like they would have, like, a Melanie Martinez sound. I don't know if that's who that is, per se, but... Next album is Idol Can Die Sick Rock by Candy Syrup. It's some J-pop group. I don't know enough about them to comment. Next one, I've seen that on Bandcamp. I know the next one is a Vaporwave album. It's supposed to be a pretty good one, but overall I'm not super into Vaporwave as a whole. And the last one is AM by Arctic Monkeys. I like the new Arctic Monkeys, like Tranquility, Home Base, and Casino, I think it's called, but I found AM a little bland. I don't know if that's just me, but I guess I'm going full hipster and going with In the Airplane Over the Sea. Question 13 is what Disney princess do you vibe with? Once again, I don't know anything about Disney. I don't know who a lot of these people are. So I'm going to pick one with a name similar to mine and just go on. Now, as a matter of fact, based on how long the recording has been, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to split this into two episodes anyways. So I'm going to end the video here as like a halfway mark. I'm going to try to like record the next part here right away, hopefully in the same session here. But I've been recording for almost an hour and I'm only like halfway through the quiz, so... Hopefully it'll make an interesting video, but I'm kind of paranoid about like video corruption or something, so I'm going to call it here, and hopefully we'll, there's going to be a part two. Maybe I'll stay around in a week, maybe I won't. We'll see how it goes here.